Our resident doctor, Francis Pitsilis, is back now from a holiday. Lovely to see you, Francis. Nice to see you too, Mel. And we are talking today about a common bacterium, Helicobacter pylori. Did I say that right? Yes, well done. Good. Now, that causes stomach ulcers and even cancer, but it can be a hidden cause of disease, can't it? Yes. And what's really important about it is that it's very, very common. Um, the researchers tell us that humans have been infected with it for more than 50,000 years. It was first identified in the early 80s. Um, and um, about 20% of New Zealanders have it. One in five people. Fewer Europeans, more Maori and uh, Pacific Island people. Right, so it's fairly common then. Oh, yes. Is it good or is it bad? Well, we have mixed feelings about it. Um, we know that... It, it was the first cause of a cancer discovered, right? Uh, that until, sounds until, bad. Well, yeah, I mean, the concept of can a bacteria give you or an infection give you a cancer? Yes. And I don't think at the time people really thought about that. They thought people got stomach ulcers or gastric cancer from stress and things like that. But now it's the cause of gastric cancer. Um, so from that point of view, it's bad and it causes stomach problems. But from the point of view that it protects you from multiple sclerosis, asthma and allergies. So we've got a situation where the researchers are saying well it does some good stuff here a whole lot of people are infected with it it does some bad stuff that we've got to be careful of um, and so now they're also looking at all these other areas that it could be responsible for but they're still treating carefully so how do you actually get it then you get it from close contact you usually get it in childhood um, sharing, being close, not washing your hands. But look, I've even had adults who've come to me and said, look, I think I know I've got what my friend's got. And there you are, they had it. But how do you know that you've got it? Well, the thing that will alert you to it, the commonest symptoms are going to be any sort of dyspepsia, heartburn, abdominal pain, bloating, feeling full after a meal. If you ha I have got discomfort when you eat or after you eat and you've got an ulcer. And also what you must not miss is um, any new symptoms of your stomach, any new pain. If you've got a family history of stomach cancer, if you've lost weight, you have trouble swallowing, you absolutely have to go and check this out with the doctor. So this is the bug that causes gastric ulcers and stomach cancers. And yeah, so gastric is the same as stomach. Mm -hmm. And it also causes gastritis, which is an inflamed stomach. And it also causes heartburn. So all the stomach things and the bit after it, the duodenum. So what other things should you be worried about it? I mean, is there anything else that need, you need yes, to be concerned? because what the researchers have firmed up on is that it's a sneaky hidden cause of iron deficiency that no one's worked out why you've got it, or B12 deficiency that no one's worked out why you've got it. Right, so with both of those, you don't sleep well, you get tired. Um, with iron deficiency, you get heavy periods. Um, you get anxious with both of them. So uh, hidden cause, and there's a, a, an autoimmune condition called immune thrombocytopenic purpura. That, yeah, I know. That means low platelets. Okay. <laughs> so, and then migraine. Really? Yes. You see, if you don't think of it, you don't check it, especially if the migraineur has got stomach problems as well. So, because right. you, you don't often think about your migraine being associated no. with, your, with your stomach, no. do you? No, and you know, the thing behind all of this is that this bug causes local problems to stop you getting your iron and your B12, right? Mm. But it also causes inflammation around the body, which then they think is responsible for these other problems that you can get. Now, skin problems. Mm. Skin, psoriasis, rosacea, acne, hives, blepharitis, that's eyelid inflammation, okay? Now, at the moment, there's not a lot of agreement and people are sort of mixed feelings. Let's say it's controversial, but they're doing a lot of research at the moment about heart disease, um, kidney disease, autoimmune diseases, diabetes type 2. Um, so I think 
um, we're going to get more information about those areas because I don't think we should just wholesale be testing everybody mm. for Helicobacter pylori. But I think the public and, and their doctors need to just be a bit more alert because one in five people have got it, but how many are being harmed? So how do you test for it then? Yeah. Now, um, if you're having a gastroscopy, which is a scope into your food pipe, your esophagus, mm. stomach and duodenum, if you're having that, they can easily take um, samples from a couple of parts of the stomach and they can test then. But if you're not uh, in that situation, there are two tests. There's a breath test and a, a stool test, a poo test. I've done that one. Yeah. That was not for well, that, that was for blood, wasn't it? No, that was for that was for uh, my gut bacteria to check oh, on all that. Oh, I know that. that one. I know that yep, one. And that yeah. was a it was yeah. a well, this one interesting might, collection this, process. This, this one might be different. It might just be very simple. But anyway, it's a, the poo test is mm. fairly specific and fairly sensitive. That means it's fairly reliable. So it's no big deal for someone to do that, and it's a, a relatively accurate test. Just, uh, you just got to, yes, oh, we won't go into that at this time of day, I think, because it's, it's, you do have to collect a certain number of yeah, well, samples. I was reading um, the national consensus of the Greek experts last night, and they reckon that because their population doesn't like do it, dealing with poo, that they recommend the breath test. But the breath test is really, you know, complicated to do. The poo test is much better. You just got to collect it, and once you're over it, you're I over it. I think New Zealanders are better with mm. poo. So how is it treated then? Well, um, the classic treatment is what we call triple therapy. A couple of antibiotics and um, a proton pump, pump inhibitor like Losec or Omeprazole, one of those. Right. Um, but some people um, are resistant to the antibiotics. So then if we're stuck, we have to use something called quadruple therapy. So, you know, in different parts of the world, there are different susceptibilities to these antibiotics and different resistances. So what's, sorry, what's a quadruple therapy? It means four things yeah, <laughs> instead of three. And the four things that we use include something called bismuth. Which is? It's a really old ulcer treatment. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that was around when I first graduated. So the, the <laughs> antibiotics can cause issues, though, with the gut as well, can't That's they? That's right. And you know what the researchers have found? That if you have probiotics, when you have your triple or quadruple therapy, the probiotics will reduce your side effects and make the therapy work better. A lot to think about. So have you got any, uh, are there any natural or lifestyle factors that we could be doing that might help us? Well, look, you know, I did peruse it and some people were talking about curcumin and fish oil, but there wasn't enough data to support it. I really needed to have more than one scientific paper to really repeat that research. So at the moment, I think I'm putting my money on probiotics. Okay. Yeah. So you got any final words for us? Yeah, I think the most important thing is to not ignore any new stomach symptoms, any pain, any um, black poo, that's a red flag. Right. And be prepared that it could be, this bug could be a hidden cause of things that you hadn't thought about. So that's one of the good the things that you really need to be doing is, uh, I mean, uh, could gross a few people out, but you've got to look at your poop, don't you? Well, absolutely. Mm. Before you flush, my Have children, this is quite, this is probably going to gross you all out. My children sometimes take photos of it and send it to me. Well, that's good. They're making sure that you're um, satisfied, that you're happy <laughs> yeah. with it. I didn't need to know, but I guess I do know. <laughs> Dr. Francis, thank you so much for joining us today. Pleasure. Now we're going to see Francis next week and if you are concerned about anything discussed this morning, please contact your own healthcare professional.